This channel is part of the History Hit Network. This 70-foot Norman tower is all that's left of a great castle built exactly 900 years ago and around which grew up the town of Bridgenorth in Shropshire. The castle was occupied for more than 500 years, surviving at least four lengthy sieges, until at last in the Civil War it fell to Cromwell's army, who left it as we see it today, leaning at an angle of 15 degrees, ten more than the Tower of Pisa. As for the rest of the castle, it's long gone, either plundered or destroyed, along with all the town's early records. So what did this castle look like? The people of Bridge North have asked us to create a picture of how it was in its heyday. And as usual, we've got just three days to do it. There are two parts to the small town of Bridge North, the lower town on the valley floor next to the River Severn, and the upper town, which sits on a promontory overlooking the surrounding countryside. The northern end of the promontory is built up with houses and shops, the southern half a beautifully landscaped public park, believed to be where the main castle once stood. All that remains today is the ruined tower, amid peace and tranquility. Not for long. Over the next three days, we're going to try and understand the plan and architecture of the castle from its construction in the early 1100s to its fall in the mid-17th century. As usual, the team are keen to get started. The geophysics team is already at work in the park. This will be ongoing over the next three days because of the park's size and some difficult rose bushes. This, though, isn't the only problem. What's the problem, Les? Yes. I, 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 we've got a scheduled boundary of the monument. A scheduling means that you can't dig there? Well, not without a research design and permission, which is that way. Yeah. Yes. And then this area out here is outside the scheduled area, so is, we could do something. But because this line has been drawn on a map, it's actually somewhere across this this grass yeah. and this tarmac, which yeah. seems to be completely inadequate to define a legally defined monument. You yeah. know. What was actually defined is this boundary that went mm. through here. But that boundary is gone. That still is the legal definition of the I mean, scheduled it's just, monument. It's just so archaic, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> so ba yeah. basically, we can't come anywhere this side of that yellow line, but we can go that side. That side's yes. fine. Well, I mean, you can see that. It's totally different grass on that side. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's clearly not historical grass. So we can't dig here. No. We're going to have trouble over there. We can't dig at all and the geophys is going to be difficult. Where on earth can we dig? Well, we can dig the other side of this line because this is outside mm. the scheduled area. Anywhere else? Uh, well, the, they did an excavation over by the rectory and that seems to have picked up the ditch. That's another area we could look at. So the rectory garden in the shadow of the magnificent 18th century church is a good place to start. A previous excavation in the garden in 1991 uncovered signs of a ditch but had no mention of its size or depth. <laughs> so where, where were you standing when you decided that was how it looked? In the park, I was under siege by some of the pupils from the local Oldbury Wells Secondary School who had their own ideas of what the castle once looked like. <laughs> Why didn't you finish? Because you were talking, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Show us your pictures. Who's got the best one? Yeah, uh, yeah sure. Yeah. Well, do they know something that we don't? Yeah. They seem pretty sure they know what the castle looks like. This is a great way 
of looking at the top of a castle. Really wonderful place to be. Philip Dixon is a specialist on castles, who over the next few days is going to be examining every detail of the tower. Uh, that groove there is where the lead of the roof was fitted into the wall. But isn't that an odd arrangement? Because that would have meant that it filled up with water, presumably, yeah. inside the roof, without like right. a big V valley. Yeah, and then it drained out down the middle. It's the most sensible way of doing it, because you then can put lead all over the top and the water falls down to the bottom, and you don't get water coming onto the wall. Yeah. There's a lovely window yeah. there uh, with a very nice head to it with the plaster, the original plaster, still on it. And then in the corner there is a wash basin. Oh, right. right. A ha sort of hand basin. Yeah. Um, because this is the private room uh, at the upper level of the tower. History Hit is an award-winning streaming platform built by history fans for history fans. Enjoy our rich library of documentaries covering key events and locations of the medieval period. History Hit's medieval offering features leading historians such as Dan Jones, Eleanor Yanega and Kat Jarman. Not only that, but we've a rich library of audio documentaries covering every period of history through our network of podcasts. Sign up now for a free trial and Chronicle fans get 50% off their first three months. Just be sure to use the code CHRONICLE at checkout. Common castle design of the time was a number of walls built around a settlement as a means of defence. The outer wall fortification was known as a curtain wall and the enclosure it created was known as a bailey. Further walls, known as bailey walls, would often be built inside to create additional enclosures, called middle and inner baileys. Outside the castle, there'd often be a moat or ditch as an outer means of defence, which is what was thought to be found in 1991 in the rectory garden. The GF is. I've actually got some results, which is quite amazing. Well, I'm surprised oh, in the garden. Oh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is a nightmare, to yeah. be honest. So we're looking at low resistance shown as red. So that's what we'd expect with the for, ditch. For a ditch. Whereas the black in this instance is high resistance, stone, rubble, things like that. How does that square up with that earlier trench then? Well, Phil? you see, we, we, we know that uh, there, was a, there was a trench here. In fact, you, you can, can see actually ground, see can that we? here. Oh, you ah, see, you yeah, see, the is. ground just drops away very slowly yeah. there, and the grass is a lot, uh, a so lot I'm lusher. So I'm yeah. on the end of and it that's here. Right. Like it comes this. across here. Yeah. And what they picked up was the actual edge of a ditch. They had the uh, uh, the side of a ditch sloping away. So it's going, going down this way. That's right. Which is so where fits. you've got it. That's right. That fits. Yeah. Nice. Well, in which case, the obvious thing is presumably to come across Cross the there. ditch this way, isn't yeah. it? Are they going to mind us mucking the plants up and no, everything? No. Well, no. I mean, it's either that or the tree, and I yeah. mean, I, I'd sooner dig in that. Oh, I know what ends prehistoric. Our first trench is open. Back to the park to see if Chris has got any results from the early geophysics. Oh, that is fantastic. Well, that result is the flower beds. That's all I'm afraid. Well, great. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but, Thanks for but, your work. Yeah, but hold on, hold on. There is this area of high resistance in here. Now... So it looks as if there might be something there after all. Hold on, hold on. Isn't this the area that's scheduled? No, it's not. The schedule... We've done right up the scheduled area, and in fact, this is outside the schedule. So in fact, we can put a trench, if that's necessary, right up against the scheduled area. So it looks as if there is perhaps a trace of something and we can dig it. Wall or a building or, I don't know, another flower bed? <laughs> Let's hope not. A few weeks before we arrived, and I stress before we arrived, Bridge North was awarded the prestigious title of winner, Britain in Bloom. We're going to have to do an awful lot of tidying up afterwards if Bridge North's going to win next year. This kind of crushed up sandstone stuff, is that, I mean, is that your anomaly? That could explain the anomaly, but the point of the trench being that long was we thought it stopped somewhere here. So I think you need to take that out because we want to see whether that goes right the way across the trench. I mean, this could just be a layer of sort of scalpings brought in to level up the gardens. It, yes, it? it could easily be. But that might be explaining our geophysics if it stops. Oh right, so even if it is okay. a load of garden scalpings, that could be what's giving us our reading. It's not a wall after all. I, I never said it was a wall. No, no. <laughs> <laughs>
Robin had set up in the rectory library, where he'd been reading about the early settlers of Bridge North. Robin. Hi, Danny. Who was the chap who had this castle built in the first place? Robert de Belem, who subsequently became Earl of Shrewsbury. And what do we know about him? Well, I have to say, I've had many unpleasant characters on Time Team over the years. I think he takes the biscuit as the nastiest I've ever come across. Why? What did he do? He tended to take captives and refuse to ransom them so that he could have the pleasure of torturing them to death. He would impale men and women on hooks. He starved 300 prisoners to death over Lent. And the worst thing of all was uh, he had as a hostage uh, his godson, a little lad. And because uh, the child's father had displeased him, he gouged out his eyes with his own bare fingernails. That's the kind of person he was. What happened to him? Well, the trouble was that when you're that mighty uh, and hold that much land, uh, the sky's the limit. And, of course, eventually he rebelled against the king himself, Henry I, who took Bridge North by storm, uh, really by threatening to hang everyone in the place, which persuaded them quite unnaturally, uh, you know, to surrender. And eventually took him prisoner and imprisoned him literally for life. And he was kept so close a prisoner that we really don't know exactly when he did die. Serves him right. I agree with you. Outside the library in the rectory garden, Phil's team were hard at work having to dig the trench by hand. But over in the park, courtesy of the mechanical digger, life was decidedly easier. As long as we don't get an edge, there still might be something below it, which is the geophysics. Is that right, John? That's the theory. <laughs> I'm getting more worried by the minute. Are you? Well, this is Chris's area, not mine. <laughs> so you're oh, here. Look at that. Oh, wow. Oh, Ian. Yeah. That's definitely been faced, is not it? Was this a castle wall we'd uncovered? It was my, my not Chris's. I was going to say that. <laughs> yeah. Just what we hit, I was yeah. going to say you're, coming, you're here Shall to take the credit or deny the responsibility, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, no, it's some pottery. Woohoo! We are fine, Stray. Chris, bang on. Good grief. I think they're just loose there. Uh, yeah. There's no more in there, is there? No. It's just loose too. Too. John, if there were well, the... just a load of stones sitting the top soil, would that yeah, have given you an anomaly? Well, there were three, two others, weren't there? We've got the, the two, two you lifted. Come out. Mm -hmm. And now there's another couple. So we'd only unearthed a few stones. But we also knew that somewhere in front of the tower there should be a large ditch, which would have been the divide between the inner and outer baileys and a defence against attack. There was a lot more digging to do in this corner of the park. It's going to hide a lot of the features against yes. the tower. Yeah. Philip, our castle expert, will also work closely with Victor Ambrose, the team's illustrator, to advise on the architecture and structure of castles. And there's also what looks like a, a garderobe. On... Our incident room has been set up in one of the local houses next to the park. There really does seem to be some clues yeah. in the layout of the town which yeah. might help us understand how the castle worked, where the bailey was and so yeah. on. I think this town plan actually doesn't seem to have changed very much over no. the additions of maps. Well they often don't do they? I mean it's very persistent the layout of the streets and the properties. Mm. The shape that strikes you immediately when you look at the maps is this shape marked in orange yeah. which seems to indicate to me where the Bailey line would have been with the castle at this end. What I intend to do next, armed with this map in effect, is yeah. to walk these lines round and see if there's any evidence for the Bailey wall, yeah. where the slopes break off, that kind yeah. of thing, and just see if there's any, any clue still out there. How much soil do you reckon you've taken out? Well, I reckon we shifted about 10 tonne of dirt today. In a day? That's, yeah. I finally got away. You were. Asking for me. Yeah, yeah. What, yeah. what have you got well, then? Well, we're just complimenting ourselves on having dug an enormous hole by hand <laughs> today. Yeah. Fantastic. Wait till he tells you what was in it. Oh, yes, yes. First of all, we got we got quite a few finds, including yeah. these oh, uh, these clay nice, pipe bowls are yeah, rather nice. They're 17th century, so we're looking at the Civil War just after there's that. stamps so, on them as well. Yeah, they're they? stamped. Yeah, they're nice good. little bowls. Yeah, yeah. But as for the archaeology, do you see that hole down there? Yeah. That back edge of the hole, yeah. as far as I can see from the drawing, is supposed to represent the back edge of the ditch. 
Oh. In other words, you should be able to see it coming across there. They can't see it. So you think they misinterpreted it? I think they've misinterpreted it. I don't think that there is a major castle ditch here, no. So basically, no there's ditch. nothing here. We don't think so. So we should shut this down, really, and, and, and move on to something I'd else. I'd rather leave a skeleton crew just to test it in the morning. What, are you going to do? I, I dig, don't wanna... dig, dig a yeah. side of it or yeah. something? Yeah. yeah. Right, OK. End of day one, and we've shifted skip loads of earth today, 10 tonnes in Phil's trench alone. But we still haven't found the big castle ditch. So where the heck is it? It's got to be here somewhere. Tomorrow, we're going to dig down deeper, we're going to scour through the old maps, and we're going to push our search out into the town in our search for the Norman castle, which means a lot more back gardens are going to get trashed tomorrow. Join us after the break. Beginning of day two in our search for our missing castle. And you can clearly see from this funicular railway that Bridge North is built on a valuable strategic point high over the River Severn. So it's clearly a good place to build a castle. Up here, we're right on the edge of our promontory. So these back gardens are the furthest out we can dig in our search for the castle wall. In the garden of number 23, East Castle Street, Mark and Carenza already have a plan for the next trench. So you two, what are you up to? Hi, Tony. Well, we think we've got archaeology here. There's all sorts of things going on. Different heights and different levels. You can see the roof height there, going down here, going down here. Each garden seems to be at a different level. Which well, might mean... That might mean that we're on the edge of the Castle Bailey, as it were, and we're sort of inside it here and then dropping out of it immediately over the garden wall. And Mark thinks yeah. there might be a tower yes, hang on, hang here. on. There's another possibility <laughs> over here. We think that this is where the castle wall might have been. Yeah. And look, if you look, it's straight in that direction and turns round in that direction. And what's more, we're over the top of the bridge, so this will be a, a classic place to put a defensive tower of some description or other. Excellent. It's hard to imagine that the leaning tower in the park is all that's left of this once great castle. In its heyday, it would have occupied the whole of the promontory. So Stuart and Meyer set off into the town to look for any other remains. They found a big gateway, which was more or less... Where the gateway? Here you still separate. That's where the bailey would be. And this old bit of water. Meyer, one of the Time Team graphic designers, will take digital photographs of whatever they find in the hope of piecing together a picture of the castle. Think of it as above-ground archaeology. There we go. OK. OK. Now, unfortunately, it's all covered in this, this wash, mm. so it's a bit difficult to work out what the bonding's like, but right. keep, keep looking and see what else we, we okay. find. Are you both skiving? <laughs> <laughs> Don't think of this as archaeology. This is research. Jane Griffiths has lived in Bridge North all her life, and we've been told she's a fountain of knowledge on the town. There's a fascinating piece of wall. I don't know if you've seen it. It's, it's at the back of this building. It's right. not very far away. I think it's probably part of the, the outer bailey of the castle wall, oh, but um, still standing just, just around the corner, around the back of this building. Really? Yes. Would you, after we've finished the tea, would you mind it showing us? <laughs> the geophysics team is still in the park, now using radar to penetrate deeper into the ground in the hope of locating a ditch. Could this provide the answer? <coughs> see, can you see that the strata begin to pull up? Now, the, that seems to be the key point. And what I'm hoping is that this is the fill of the, of, of the ditch. If that's right, then if we were to put a trench in somewhere in this region, we might just pick up the northern end of the ditch. The new trench Chris is suggesting is an extension at a right angle to the trench already begun on day one. Here, it could be two metres down. Just going straight. It should cut across the ditch, I don't think that is what we're looking for. And hopefully reveal its width. There's a clay pipe stem. Back in the town, Jane has led Stuart and Meyer to a huge freestanding piece of the castle wall. This is super. I mean, look at, if you look at the, the bonding on this stone, it's quite crude rubble. It's not shaped yes, very is, well, but yeah. it's very well bonded, very thick in, in layers. And at the bottom, can you see how the whole thing slopes out downwards. Yes. Well, that's, that's what we call a batter. It's designed to stop people undermining the wall to break, to break in the bailey. What makes this really exciting is that 
this orange line round here is where we were predicting the Bailey line ought to be from map oh, evidence. Right. And the bit you've brought me to is exactly on that line. Oh, that's so perfect. That's kind of confirmation that we've got, in a way, yes. the first piece in the jigsaw right. here. Last night, Phil had decided to leave a skeleton crew to finish the trench in the rectory garden. Today, call it instinct, and for reasons only he knows, it's getting deeper. The big castle we can see there, yeah. is that actually the key? Well, I, I think it is, although, of course, you do get very big gatehouses built at this time as well. Yeah. But I don't think this is one. I think it is actually a, blo a blown-up keep. So between where the keep is and the end of the promontory, you've still got a very large space. Yeah. Now... Well, you, you've got to fit in into that. You've got to put a hall, uh, private apartments, chapel, uh, stables, barns, lodgings for visitors. All that sort of stuff, yeah. yeah it's a lot of lot of buildings right. got to go into so that, that area. So that effect is, is the castle between yeah. the, the the keep and this southern end of the. Uh, it's all tree. castle. The trouble is, when we say castle, we have, our attention focuses on the defences, whereas they are, of course, primarily a residence. Yeah. To the southwest of Bridge North Promontory is another well-known landmark, Pan Pudding Hill. This is a siege castle, a man-made hill built by attacking armies to position their war machines whilst besieging the castle. Just about there. Now... The unfortunate troop of men about to follow Phil up Pan Pudding Hill are a group of enthusiasts who are going to reconstruct a 12th century catapult known as a Perrier. Yes. Yeah. Now, don't we be alarmed? It's been done before. That really is a siege castle. <laughs> that's what they did, and that's what we got oh, to do. Oh, no. Right. The first siege of Bridge North happened in 1101. Henry I laid siege to the castle shortly after its completion, when Robert de Belem was accused of conspiring against the monarchy and refused to answer summonses relating to 45 charges of cruelty. I'd say that on this occasion, lugging a wooden catapult and sacks of ammunition up a hill would test anyone's enthusiasm and borders on being cruel itself. It makes you blow a bit, doesn't it? It's just a wonderful view. You can understand why it is they've built these quite impressive siege works oh, yes. to actually throw stuff over there, but it does seem a hell of a long way. I think it's about 250 yards. The machine that you've got, is that going to get the, the 250 no, yards? No, ours is a lot smaller. It only gets about 150, 200 yards. That's, that's going to put us down in this, this bottom row. <laughs> yeah. But that way, look, we've got a plain view straight into that field. Does, oh, that, that, does that seem like a good idea? Yeah, we'll go that way. It's much better. We get a nice shot straight into the field. It only hurt a few sheep, hopefully. Right, well, <laughs> then, let's get it started. Let's give it a tap. Okay. <laughs> of course, we've got to get it over there. Drop. So what would life have been like for people who visited the castle? Well, you've got to remember that a castle in those days was first and foremost a power base, which enabled people like Robert to wreak his evil way around the countryside. Um, but it was a combination also of, of manor house, where someone would stay and be entertained with their large following. It was also a law court, and people would be brought here for justice to be imposed on them. And of course, it was also a prison. Uh, in between visits from royalty and other important people in the realm, uh, I, I think life here would have been pretty tame and quiet, other than, you know, the various trials that went on periodically. But then there would be the hustle and bustle, the orders for... Uh, we've, we've got detailed accounts for the supplying of uh, hogs, of cheese and salt. On those occasions, they, the whole place must have come alive with feasting and celebrating uh, until the king moved on to his next appointment. Are there any remnants of it left standing now apart from that? We're very fortunate in that one of the castle gates uh, survived, built into a local pub called the Hole in the Wall. And when they pulled that pub down in 1821, uh, they discovered uh, the postern or, or north gate to Robert's castle. 
uh, and this is a, a, one, of the, one of several engravings that we have of it. And what happened to it? Um, as we, with all town improvers, they decided it would obstruct the traffic if they kept it, so they blew it up with gunpowder in 1821. Typical. Back in the park, our search for the defensive ditch has intensified. We need to uncover its location to understand the plan and defences of the castle. But we've done as much damage to the park as we dare without result, so we've had to change tactic. It's dirty, like you're getting out of the ditch. Right. With a drilling machine rather than a digger, geologists have sunk three boreholes in front of the tower. This is to help them understand how deep the level of natural bedrock is below the topsoil. The results suggest that the level is sloping away from the tower in two directions, towards the edge of the promontory and towards the houses in front of the tower. What's, what's likely to be happening? Well, behind us over here, we, we've got the gatehouse. It must have been the gateway like, here, must have yeah. And in yeah. front of the gate, to get from the castle into the town, yeah. you've, you've got to have a bridge of something of, of the sort, yeah. and perhaps a causeway. So you think we might have a causeway there, and that it might explain why it's getting deeper as it goes down? Yeah. The new approach seems to have worked. It suggests we've got a causeway crossing the ditch. We can now excavate a section without digging the whole park up. In the garden of number 23, Carenza's uncovered a wall. Everything we've had that's been lying on top of here has been sort of 17th century, so it looks as if this narrow wall had come down by the 17th century. Right. But it seems too narrow to be the castle wall, and it's Absolutely. far too narrow for Absolutely. that. So what we're thinking is that it's a garden wall built probably on top of the castle wall, and that this huge mortar spread is coming right back across here, and we haven't really got the other edge of it. Yet. So, so that could be medieval? Well, I, I think that looks a much better candidate for being the medieval wall, and it's also at a better depth, because we're still really quite shallow. Yeah. If this is the curtain wall, it'll be an enormous help. As Stuart's already found a big piece on the other side of the promontory, we'd now be able to work out the exact width of the outer bailey. Well, maybe the Civil War could have got musket ball oh, from the... Um, classic yeah, sequence. ..on the uh, spoil heap. Right. Was there a skirmish here in the Civil War? Well, the siege lasted a long time and musket balls must have been flying everywhere. Well, that's clearly one <laughs> of them. Well, there's one of them. <laughs> now we're pretty sure there's a big defensive ditch here, the fate of this corner of the park seems inevitable. It's 3.40, day two. We've got this drilling equipment brought in, percussive drilling equipment. We've got rid of these flower beds. There's a trench over there. The rose garden has completely gone. We've got another big trench down here. And as you can see, Mick the Dig is tapping into the tarmac with his saw thing. We've got another trench way down there because somewhere around here must be the rest of this castle. And Mick seems to be prepared to go to any lengths to find it. Mick, where's the castle? It's over in front of us, over here. No, it's not. What have we got in terms of structure? Nothing. What have we got yes, in the we way have. that We've people the... lived? Nothing. What have we got in terms of the plan of the place? Absolutely yes, nothing. We have. One and a half days. Yes, we have. So you bring in the heavy machinery? No, but there's reasons for doing that. We know a hell of a lot more about it because of the structural analysis of the keep. Right, but that's been there for a thousand but years. nobody's looked at it. You make the mistake, like a lot of them, of thinking it's only going to be holes in the ground and pottery that produces the information. Now, come on. What do we know that we didn't know when we first came here? These, these yeah. lads have looked at it and we've got a totally different story, haven't we? Yeah. We now know that here there must be a huge, great ditch, probably 30, 40 foot deep, something like mm. that. If you were standing on the hill over there looking this way, there would be a great trench through this hill. We know there wasn't another ditch down there because we haven't got it in the garden. That's useful. The far one coming into the bailey is, is right down the end. And there would have been another big trench across there. So it's, it's all coming together. This is just because there's been so much levelling and mm. dumping in here, as far as mm. we can see. Come on, look at this trench in mm. here, look. According to the radar results and coring machine, this is where our ditch should be. Running across the promontory, in front of the tower, with a causeway crossing into the castle. Over on Pan Pudding Hill, Victor's joined Phil and his team to see what the 1101 siege of the castle would have looked like. Ah, 
Tony, just in time. What on earth did they use to fire out of this thing? Well, all sorts of things. Obviously, rocks were one of the main weapons, but you can fire almost anything. Pearl! And pots of quick lime, pieces of diseased animal. Pearl! Hornets' nests, hornets' nests bursts, out come a lot of very angry <laughs> hornets. hornets. Yes! yes! You go around the battlefield, chop off their heads, put probably with people than you, catapult them over the wall, just to say, here's your relieving army. Do you mm. want to surrender now? Pearl! Couldn't sometimes the people in the castle hit the operators? Yes, but they had a way of dealing with that as well. They'd go around, round up local children, uh, people they knew as well, strap them to the siege engines. <laughs> right. uh, well, I don't think we're going to do that. <laughs> and I don't think we're going to fire human body parts. What are we going to fire? Grapefruit. <laughs> grapefruit? <laughs> Flaming grapefruit? Oh, look at that blazing Three, beauty. Three, two, yes. one, four! Well, this is real science in action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a real waste of good fruit, actually. <laughs> Two, one, pull! Pull! Oh. Hey! Pretty good. Persistence pays off. Back in the park, after four and a half hours of digging, we finally uncover our 12-foot defensive ditch. At last, we seem to be getting somewhere. Add the defensive ditch and causeway to our other finds, the postern or northern gate that was demolished in 1821 and the large section of curtain wall Stuart found earlier this morning, and we can begin to piece together a picture of our castle. Having virtually demolished a corner of the park in our pursuit of the ditch and having once again quite literally moved tonnes of earth, everyone deserves a nightcap in the pub, where Mick has plans for tomorrow. We've got to carry on in the rectory garden because we're getting medieval pottery out of it, but we're also going to look at this tunnel, aren't we? All of 80 feet long. Yeah. Is that the one that we think might have undermined the original castle? You better believe it. Well, a tunnel's great, but I want to see some solid stuff coming out of the ground, all right? <laughs> Join us after the break. Tomorrow we're going to go down a secret tunnel. Robin, you can go in first. Oh, boy. <laughs> and hopefully, at last, we'll discover our Norman castle. I'll try and sort that out for you, Tony. Please. Cheers. 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 Beginning of day three, and we've only found about this much of the huge Norman castle that we've been looking for, and yet we're still working on this huge empty trench, which I thought we'd closed down 48 hours ago. Why are we still here? Look, Why are you fettling away? You said the day before yesterday, we're closing this trench, but I'll just have a little fiddle. I said we were going to leave a skeleton crew to sort it out, Tony. That's what we've had. We had a skeleton crew in there yesterday. It the whole thing was bugging me. I just couldn't understand. I didn't understand what was going on in there. So we carried on down. In that material we took out on the first day, we had 17th century clay pipes. We've gone on down. We've now got earlier material. If we go right down to the bottom, we could get down to some sort of a land surface that relates when they actually built the castle. Something that the people actually walked, walked on. on who That's right. It. So we don't actually know just where that level is. So we brought the machine in. We're going to core on down, see whether we can actually find the natural bedrock. But if it goes on down for metres and metres and metres, I accept it. We're not going to finish it today. And then we will. We'll close it down and I'll go and find something else to do. How long? Give us a time. We're waiting for the results of this. It could be an hour, it could be two hours. No more, all right? OK. Yeah. So the rectory trench is going to get even deeper. Is this a desperate move or will Phil's instincts and experience pay off? In the garden of number 23, we may have our first glimpse of some solid medieval archaeology. But here, we've got our medieval wall there, with the facade of it going straight down. We've got about two or three courses there. If that's the inner face, are you thinking that the outer face is out here? That's what I think at the moment, that we've got a really big, thick wall, two or three metres wide, yeah. and it's like a wall walk on yeah. top of it. Yeah. But to prove that, we really need to extend the trench, because the other possibility is that there are two narrower walls and a small room in between here, which would mean something more like right. a tower. Right. So the patio has to go. At last, the finds are beginning to come up, aren't they? But these aren't ours. Where did you get this lot, Jane? Well, you could say I inherited these. Um, these were collected in the 1950s by a local historian. Um, 
he watched while workmen were putting drainage ditches into the castle gardens, where, where you're digging now, um, and all these bits of broken pottery and bones started to come to the surface, so he, he scooped them up and, uh, and saved them. And gave them to you? He did. How well, old would he have been? Oh, he'd have been in his 60s, I was about eight. So he passed <laughs> these finds to a little girl because he, he did, knew yes. from her enthusiasm That's that right. they'd survive, and yes. they have, haven't they? <laughs> Stephanie, what have we been getting? So we've got these from the rectory garden. What might they have come from? Well, they've come from jugs, so they're tablewares, effectively. And we've got some coins. Yes, we have. Um, this one is um, a short cross penny with a cross and crosslets motif. It dates to the reign of Henry II. Why is it cut in half? Uh, the, these were clipped. Uh, clipped coins were, were quite common, and then it became a halfpenny. So you could actually <laughs> buy a halfpenny chew with that? Yes, yes, you could. And um, what about this one? Uh, we have a buckle here. The design of, of the buckle, I'd suggest it's a sort of 16th to 17th century date, and it might have been used on the end of a strap or as on a purse to secure a purse at the waist. Now, Stuart, what can you tell us about our best find? This is a late 12th to 13th century hunting arrowhead. And would this have been for killing people? It was more for hunting deer and things like that, but I think in a siege situation you'd use anything to hand, really. That's our first bit of luck in these three days. Mick's interested to know why Phil thinks it's necessary to continue in the rectory garden. If you see where that toolbox is, yeah. we put a, a, an auger hole down in oh, yeah. there. Yeah. We got natural at 3 metres 80. Blimey. So if we got natural up here at about, what, one and a half metres, yeah. and we got it down there at 3 metres 80, it is diving away incredibly quickly. So the ditch that we thought we had at the beginning as a result of the earlier excavation, and then we thought we didn't have because we couldn't see it, is now back on again. It looks like it's very much back on again, Mick. So now we have a second ditch. I'm hoping Stuart's also come up with some results from his town exploration. What's been really exciting about Bridge North is that still surviving in the bits of the town are elements of this 12th century castle and its bailey that we've been looking for. I've been round and photographed and looked at all the walls round the edge and all around here there are bits and bats of original castle fabric and wall fabric surviving. There are other things which also are very, very exciting. The, this line of cottages on West Castle Street, can you see how it heads straight towards where we think there's a causeway across the ditch up here. Oh yes, th this bit is called New Road, isn't it? So obviously the original did go down that's, there. That's right. So that's allowed us to actually confirm that initial idea of the shape that was obvious on the plan, that that is the shape and extent of the castle and its bailey. What we've actually been looking for, below ground in effect, is, is sitting there staring us in the face. The different types of stonework have given us our biggest clue to the castle architecture. At the northern end of the promontory, the pieces of curtain wall are all coarse brickwork, whereas at the southern end, where the castle buildings would have been, the stones all large dressed blocks. We now have a clear picture of the curtain wall. In the garden of number 23, the trench has been widened and extended. Phil's taken a break from his own dig to see what Carenza's found. This morning we'd, we'd only got the trench to this far and we didn't know whether it was an enormous thick wall that was going to go all the way yeah. to the edge of the castle wall and be a huge, great big sort of wall walk thing. But as you can see, it looks like we've got the other side now. So it looks like it's a narrower wall. But what we're thinking now because of that is we've got a wall here, another one there, so that where I'm standing now could actually be our tower. You're, so you would be actually inside a tower? I, I think so, yes. Yeah. yeah. But what of the leaning tower in the park? Philip Dixon's now had over two days to analyse the ruin. This is the remains of a wall. Yeah. Sloping down there and here. This is the first bit of the castle. How do you, how do you know that's the first bit? Uh, because of the way in which this, which is the keep, has been built over the top of it. That's that line I can see going right the way up that's there. That's right. right. So this is the first phase. Right. And this, is, this is second. Because it's butted up against Because it. it's butted up and the keep runs all the way over the top, and that's second, and then we've got a third stage, Yeah. and the third stage is the wall here, and that's not butted up against the keep, it's just standing beside it, and it, it's the forebuilding, the right. staircase that got you into the tower. Can you put any sort of dates on these phases from what you can see? Well, that could be Robert of Belém. What, what could be? This One. wall. 
This is Henry I. The very thin joints here are typical of work from about 1120 onwards. With this very thin very water thin. between the stones. That's right. So we have 1100, 1120, 1160. So Robert de Belen built the original castle of stone. But the tower didn't exist until about 1120 and was built over the existing inner bailey wall. The original staircase into the tower would have been wooden and removable until 1160, when the final phase of the tower was complete with a fixed stairway and gatehouse. So we're right round the other side now. That's right. And here's a bit of wall, the same date as the keep, yeah. coming out. How do we know it's the same date as the keep? Because all the stone lines run through, it's bonded in. It's bonded into the keep itself, right? That's right. And here we've got a groove coming right up and that's a portcullis groove. So this is where the, the grill would have come down over an entrance. That, that's right. A great arch coming out this way. <laughs> right. Right, it's very narrow though, it isn't is it? It is narrow because it's a metal portcullis, which is the most expensive sort, an iron portcullis. So which way is it defending then? Well, this is the outside and this is the inside. So this is the area where the royal apartments are then, in, in yep. here? In this area over right. here. Right. Yeah. But why is the entrance to the keep on the outside so then? That, that's a very good point. And I think the answer is that the keep isn't for the king at all. The keep is for the constable of the castle who looks after the gate. Uh, and the king doesn't need a tower because he's got his palace over here behind so us. The constable's a man who looks after the castle when the king's not there. That's right. So he's living in here looking after defending the gate. Yeah, that's right. That's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. Through Philip's analysis, we now know the area where the king's house would have been and that a wall with an ironed portcullis gateway would have protected it. Hi, Carenza. Can the excavation in Carenza's trench finally be concluded and added to the overall picture of the castle? Well, the good news is we've got a wall coming along here and another wall coming along here, so just like a tower. Mm -hmm. And even better, we've got a date for it. And the bad news? Well, the bad news is the fact that both this wall and this wall are no older than 17th century. Maybe this is a tower, it's just civil wall refurbishment. Um, but, you know, we thought we'd lost our medieval wall because mm. middle of the afternoon we thought this was medieval. But we thought this line of stones was the, the back of this wall when we first found them. But in fact, they're very ragged here, as you can see. There's no yep. straight face along here. Absolutely dead flat straight face. line there. So I think this is the nice straight front of it coming up here. So what a relief. We have found a piece of the wall that would have gone around the original castle. If we're at last beginning to piece together what this Norman castle once looked like, one big question in my mind is how did it get into the condition we find it today? The answer lies in the Civil War, and once again, Phil's in the thick of it on Pan Pudding Hill. Go on. That's, that's it. it, that's on. <laughs> yeah, that's lovely. <laughs> Put up your powder. How many guns do you reckon you can actually get up here to cover a siege? Depending on the size, and they'd probably be larger than this, they would have five to six guns on this plateau. Peace ready. Would you care to fire this one for me? Thank you very much, I'd love to. Prepare to give fire. Have a care! Give fire! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we've missed. <laughs> Have a care! The last siege at Bridgenorth in 1646 lasted for three weeks, with the Royalists returning as much firepower from within the castle as they received. This brought the battle to a stalemate, which led the parliamentarians to come up with a ruse to ensure surrender of the castle. To explain what this plan was, Robin took me to Lavington's Hole, a small cave hidden away at the foot of a cliff on the far side of the promontory. But in the end, they decided to dig this tunnel to sap up underneath the church, pack it full of gunpowder, and blow the whole thing sky high. Well, that sounds a more effective use of gunpowder. <laughs> Do you need a hand, Rob? Oh, no, no, I'm not going any further. My crouch is decidedly higher than yours. You're kidding. <laughs> All right, well, how far? 
did they get? 67 feet, if you want to be absolutely accurate. Well, I'd say it's a long way. Do you think they could have drilled all the way, or do you think they were just packing up because it was too hard? Oh, no. I mean, we can see that they were digging, on average, about six feet a day. So a week or two would have seen them into position without any trouble at all. If you look carefully, you can see the pick marks on the walls, because it was all dug out laboriously by hand. Yeah, I can see those. Oh, yeah, I can see that they didn't make it to the end. They didn't need to, you see. It's psychological warfare. What do you mean? Up in the castle, the royalists could hear the noise of the tunnelling. And they got the message that unless they surrendered, the gunpowder would be packed in and all the, all the munitions stored in the church above, to, along with all the cavaliers, would get blown sky high. That was enough. That was enough to, be, to bluff them into surrendering. So how did the tower get like this if it wasn't blasted from here? Ha! Huh. Well, we'll go up topside and I'll show you. Once the cavaliers had surrendered, the Roundheads couldn't leave the castle here as a kind of symbol of, of royalty, as a focus for further uprising. So, you stay here. They dug a big hole underneath, underneath this tower and they, they packed it absolutely full of gunpowder and laid kegs all around it and then, well, let me show you. Let's do it. <laughs> Robin's completely mad. Mind you, even the explosion didn't actually bring the keep down. And it still stands there at this crazy angle today as a tribute to the fantastic Norman Masons who made it in the first place. Truth, Phil, what have you been doing? <laughs> I what told you we shouldn't have shut it down. Remember the trench in the rectory garden, the one we were going to close at the end of day one? It's now over three metres deep. See, we, we've confirmed yeah. what we thought was happening. We've got this enormous ditch where Katie is. We're beginning to think that it's bottoming out now. But more importantly, we're actually at a corner of it. And it's turning round and it's going back under you. So it's coming this way under right. me and then it's turning round. Turning like that. round. So what? I mean, what's, what's, that, what's happening about that? That's a very strange thing for you to do. <laughs> well, I had hope that you might be able to tell me something about well, that. You've been touring round. Yeah. You know? <laughs> tell me what date you think it might be. Well, here are the pot. Here's, here's my evidence. 12th to 13th century, from the bottom. From the bottom? Wow. So we're looking at a pretty early date. Looks like it, So it? this ain't Civil War refurbishment. No. This is an original part of the castle. So the second ditch is also part of the original castle. The northerly turn in the ditch is unusual, but the most likely explanations are either that there was a defensive ditch running along the back of the outer bailey properties, creating an area of common ground, or it could be the junction of a defence system protecting the original church. But what of the bigger picture, the castle itself? What we know is that coming in through the north gate, there would have been a road leading up to a causeway which crossed possibly two defence ditches in front of the castle. We know that the tower was a gate tower where the constable lived and that the royal household was protected within the inner bailey and would have been surrounded by stables, kitchens and stores for the kings and lords when they were in residence. Outside the inner bailey, there would have been a small town in the outer bailey, also protected by the curtain wall. Come and have a look at this, look. This is your castle. We've had an amazing and sometimes pretty explosive three days, but in some of our biggest trenches, we haven't come across a single lump of the original castle. It's as though the entire hilltop was swept clean. What this has meant is that we've had to re-examine the castle remains and try to work out the original layout of the site. And using this material, we've written a whole new chapter in Bridge North's history.